So in this video, I'm going to discuss very important considerations about cardiovascular pharmacology um, that you should know once preparing for your step one and step two USMLE exam and even for step three. So um, let's begin. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing for more videos. So uh, first of all, um, all these cardiovascular medications are called antiarrhythmic drugs. They are generally antiarrhythmic drugs, uh, but they are also used for different purposes. So if you want to know the different classes of the antiarrhythmic drugs, the mnemonic I have made is sodium, um, beta, kills, calcium. And so um, the first class one antiarrhythmic is sodium and beta blockers are class two, potassium channel blockers are class three and calcium channel blockers are class four now let's look at the beta blockers first so beta blockers they're divided into selective and non-selective now the selective beta blockers are um, those that work only on um, beta 1 receptors on the heart and the mnemonic for them is beam and beam is for um, b for uh, bisoprolol uh, is molar, atinolol, and metoprolol. Now, the non selectives work on beta 1 in the heart as well as beta 2 in the arteries. And the mnemonic for them is TPN Timolol, propranolol, and nodalol. Now, what you should know is that Timolol is used as an eye drop for acute angle closure glaucoma, labetalol is used for hypertensive emergency. Propranolol and nodalol are used for portal hypertension in someone who has liver cirrhosis and at risk of bleeding or is bleeding. And propranolol is also used for thyroid storm and how it does this is by inhibiting 5-diiodinase and preventing it from converting T4 to T3, it also blocks the receptors on the um, on the various organs, the thyroid receptors, T3 receptors. Now, avoid beta blockers in decompensated heart failure. Avoid non-selective beta blockers in asthma and COPD. Caution should be taken with diabetics on insulin who are taking beta blockers what happens is that when these diabetics overdose insulin or they don't eat well before taking their insulin they experience hypoglycemia and how their body informs them is that they start having sweating palpitations and then they begin to feel unwell but and all this is mediated by epinephrine now if they take beta blockers the beta blockers are going to blunt the effect of the epinephrine since they all work on the same um, the same receptors so this patient wouldn't be able to um, show the signs of hypoglycemia and so they may even pass out now beta blocker overdose is treated with glucagon glucagon binds to uh, the same beta receptors but at a different site other than epinephrine now the next is calcium channel blockers generally they all cause gingival hyperplasia they are divided into dihydropyridine type and the non dihydropyridine types the dihydropyridine types are amlodipine nifedipine and nicardipine and the non dihydropyridine types are the diltiazem and cardizem or sorry diltiazem which is also known as cardizem and also verapano. Now, the dihydropyridine types work mainly on the arteries and they, they block the calcium channels and so they dilate the arteries and, and so lower your blood pressure. The, the non dihydropyridine types, they work mainly on the heart, the SA node, the AV node, and the myocardium. Now, what you should know is that. Uh, uh, calcium channel blockers can cause pan hypopituitarianism and so all for example they'll have a low TSH and they will have 
Um, also, they will have uh, things like low libido, menstrual irregularities, you should take note. And they can also cause prolactinemia um, by inhibiting dopamine release. And next is sodium channel blockers. Sodium channel blockers, they mainly are divided into class 1A, class 1B, and class 1C. Um, so, these are the most important the ones that you should um, take um, a note of. So, the class 1A are, um, the mnemonic for them is the queen proclaims disopyramid. And they are quinidine, procanamide, and disopyramid. Class 1B are lidocaine and mexilatin. Lidocaine and mexilatin are given in a patient who has arrhythmias secondary to um, myocardial infarction. Now, class 1C are also, um, they include flecanamide and proper phenol. Now, in the class 1A, in the class 1A, we have procanamide, which is used for arrhythmias in WPW, Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome. Now, you should take note, do not give class 1 antiarrhythmics and class 3 antiarrhythmics in benign arrhythmias like PVC and PAC. Next is the class 3 antiarrhythmics. So we have potassium channel blockers and their mnemonic is SAD, S, um, Sotalol, A4, Amiodarone and Dofetilide. Now let's take note of um, Amiodarone. Now Amiodarone, these are the things that we should consider. Um, one, it is excreted in the bile and so it is good for someone who has chronic kidney disease. Um, Amiodaron can also cause blue man syndrome and so the patient becomes blue or their face becomes blue and what you should also know is that Amiodaron has a very long half-life and so when you give Amiodaron for about one month Amiodaron can still, the effect of Amiodaron can still be felt. Now Amiodaron can cause pulmonary fibrosis and can cause hyper or hypothyroidism and also can cause liver injury. So um, before we give amiodarone, we need to do some baseline labs so that if the patient comes again after one week and then we realize that um, um, there are some changes, then we know that it's due to amiodarone and whether we have to stop the drug or switch to something else. So one, um, we have to check the pulmonary function. Um, either they do pulmonary function tests or they can do chest x-ray to make sure that there are no pulmonary fibrosis prior to giving it or, or just to have a baseline idea. So we, have, we can do a checks x-ray here. And next, we can do TSH, that's the thyroid function test. And then we can do LFT, which is the liver function test. Now, another one is the ibutylide. Um, it is used for chemical cardioversion. The last slide, is this diagram so these are the cardiac action potential and then we want to know where each of the um, antiarrhythmic drugs work first of all you need to understand the the, um, the shape and so this is a typical action potential in our cardiac myocyte and this is phase zero one two three and four class one antiarrhythmics work on phase zero um, class Class 2 work on phase 4, class, class 3 works on phase 3, and class 4 works on phase 2. So this is something you should know. Also, you should be able to tell that, you should be able to tell how this um, correlates with the um, EKG changes. So with the EKG, the PR interval corresponds with uh, phase uh, 4. And also, the QRS complex um, corresponds with phase 
phase one. In when we come to um, phase two of the action potential, it corresponds with the ST segment. And then when we come to the T wave, the T wave corresponds to the phase three of the action potential. Now let's move to um, the next diagram. So this is how it's gonna look like when we give an antiarrhythmic drug to um, someone. So with a class one, which are the sodium channel blockers, they mainly work on this side, which is the sodium. Um, they work on this side, phase zero. So now, this class one, we have the class one A. Um, class one A has both uh, has effect on the phase zero and phase three. So you will see that there is a change over here in phase zero here and also phase three here. And now let's go to type uh, the class one B. Class one B mainly has effect on phase three and class 1c mainly has effect on phase zero so this is something that we have to uh, remember now um, i can explain it real quick so let's say this is our action potential here so usually um, i look at it this way class 1a would draw an a like to show an a in here so you can see it works on here and works on here so that is like an a right now if uh, I want to look at class 1B and class 1C. So with class 1C, normally I'm going to write B here and C, right? But this time I want you to uh, reverse and write C here and write uh, B here. So the C comes last, but this time it's coming first. So C works on phase 0 more and B will work more on the phase uh, 3 over here. So C here on phase 0. Here, C for phase zero here, phase zero. So take note of that. Now let's look at beta blockers class. They are the class two antiarrhythmics. And what you should just know is that beta blockers decrease the slope of, of phase four. So it means that um, the cardiac myocytes will take a longer time to um, even um, start to reach their threshold in order to uh, depolarize next is class 3 which are the potassium channel blockers and as we know potassium um, channels are mostly effective at phase 3 so as you can see they are right here potassium channel blockers and they prolong the uh, repolarization so the cardiac myocyte will take a longer time to repolarize so it means that we'll have um, this over here this phase here is gonna prolong so that is effective refractory period is gonna re prolong again um, let's look at um, the class 4 antiarrhythmic which are the calcium channel blockers so calcium channel blockers um, um, what we know is that they are going to work over here they work on class um, on the uh, phase 2 of the cardiac action potential and what they do is that they prolong the repolarization of the um, of the AV node. But what you should know is that with this, this is just for the cardiac myocyte. With the SA no node and AV node, their action potentials look different. So it's something that you should look at. They do not have this uh, phase one and phase two. They just have phase zero, and they have phase three, and then they have phase. And four so you should take note of that and over here they are working calcium channels in the SA node and AV nodes are working on phase zero on this side over here so let's take note of that so thanks for watching this video if you like this video kindly subscribe to this channel for more in the future all right i'll see you and i, I wish, wish you good luck in your um, exams, exams.